hit record. All right, so now we're recording. All right, so I sent you a sheet that we use for our morning work. It would have been um, 21, page 21. How many of you have sheet page 21? Yes, Lexi, that's it. Yes, Briley, that's it. Yes, Ansley, that's it. Okay, if you couldn't print it off or didn't have it, I'm going to put it on the screen uh, and we're going to work through it together real quick. Okay, um, I also sent some other papers. There was like one had like three pages and another one had like three pages. They go together and we're going to talk through that tonight. Okay, talk about that and then you'll be able to. Um, Complete that. That's going to be your next Zoom assignment. Is those sheet other sheets I sent you? Okay. The ones. Yes, Havoc. I see them. Yes, Havoc. I see them. Uh, oh, no. Cameron. Okay. Um. So the the uh, sheets I sent you with the uh, uh, adaptation stuff. That is what we're gonna talk about a little bit later and it's gonna be your next Zoom assignment and you're gonna get a, a, a whole week to complete that, okay? Yes, Lily. For the, um, um, the picture that would take you like the bug or something like that, um, blending in with something. Do we have to take a picture of that, or can we like just like just like find a picture that we already have? If you can find one, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Or you can go outside and draw and uh, take a picture of one if you can find one. Okay. Also, I kind of sent y'all that video last weekend of some me being outside doing some things and looking at nature and stuff. I was kind of hoping that we'd get I'd get some back from you guys to let me see what you're doing. I haven't seen any of those come in, but I do want to say thank you, thank you to all of you that have sent me a message for Teacher Appreciation Week, because this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I appreciate every single one of you that have sent me a thank you note uh, or typed me out something on um, your portfolio to say thank you. I appreciate every one of them. You guys are awesome. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna screen share page 21. And we're gonna take a look at page 21. All right. So at the top, it's got, uh, we're gonna look at Marcy's schedule. We talked about schedules um, back when we were doing timelines and stuff. And actually one of your assignments for your choice board was to come up with a schedule of your day. Okay. So let's look at the schedule. It says on Sunday she goes swimming. On Monday she does violin. On Tuesday she goes to the dentist. On Wednesday she does gymnastics. On Thursday she takes more violin lessons. On Friday, she has a sleepover, and on Saturday, she goes to a softball game. All right, the first question says, what does Marcy do on Sunday? So what does Marcy do on Sunday? Who wants to tell me? Havoc, do you have your hand up? Who wants, okay, Cameron, let me get you unmuted. All right, Cameron, tell me, what does Marcy do on Sunday? Go to a softball game. On Sunday? Oh. <laughs> Marcy goes. Where does she go? Cameron, you going to tell me? I said to a softball game. Honey, this is Sunday. Look at the. Look at the Who are you talking to? What does she do? Take the base out your board. Sunday. Where's your paper? What a paper she talking about? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, please, 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 please don't say that on here. Yeah. 
Mom, please don't, please don't say that. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know you could hear me. I can hear everything that's going on around his computer. Please back away. Okay, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. All right. Cameron, look at the schedule up here on the screen. I can't see the screen. Oh, you can't see the screen. Well, get your paper then. Marcy doesn't do softball on Sunday. Who else wants to let me know what's happening on Sunday? Have it. What's she doing? Doing doing Sunday. Uh, swimming. She's going swimming on Sunday. Okay. So what does Marcy do on Sundays? Marcy goes swimming on Sunday. All right. So let's look down at the second question here. Okay. How often does Marcy have violin lessons? All right. Somebody's got a, something going on in their background. Oh, I got it. Maggie, you need to move away from the TV, please, because I can hear everything that's going on around you. All right. Raise your hand and tell me, how often does Marcy have violin lessons? Manny? Can't hear you, Manny. Two days a week. Correct. Marcy has vio. What did it say? I said two days. Yes. She has violin lessons. Two days a week. Okay. I'll make that bigger so y'all can see it. Okay. So Marcy has violin lessons two days a week. She has them on Monday and she has them on Thursday. Okay. All right. So it says down here to create your own schedule for your week. All right. Uh, who wants to tell me? What you do on Sunday and give me a give me your schedule for the week, Riley. So I do so I do my schedule for the whole week. Uh, tell me what you do on Sunday. I've lost my little thing though. Why is it not? Football it? day. Hang on, I gotta get my little text box. Say that again. Sleep sleep all day. Sleep all day. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, what do you do on to, on Monday? I do work. What kind of work? School work. All right. Whoops. All right. So she works on school work. And what do you do on Tuesday? Um, the same thing, but you can't really do the same same thing. So I'll do something else. I do. Uh, I do crafts. Crafts. After I get done with my work, so I do crafts. Okay. What do you do on Wednesday? Um, I usually get done with my my work. And right for work. I usually finish school work for the rest of the week. Okay, the week. so you finish school work? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Maggie, what do you do on Wednesday? Watch school work. Yep. Yeah. Move that down there. And what about Thursday? Um, watch a, mo a movie or watch movies. Watch movies. Whoops. 
Okay. What about Friday? I um eat I eat a hot wings. Eat hot wings? Yeah. Okay. And one day left. What do you do on Saturday? Ride my bike down the woods. So ride my bike. All right. All right, so you all got all of you should have filled in what you do for the week okay where you go what you do all right so we move down to four what is your favorite weekday activity and why who wants to tell me what their favorite whoops i lost my whole weekday activity is all right lily um hanging out with my sister all day when it's not annoying Hanging out my sister all day. Oh, she is not annoying. When she is not annoyed. All right. Who <laughs> and why? It's a two-part question. So, Lily, tell me why you like to do that. Because she don't have to do schoolwork, and whenever she's doing schoolwork, she is obnoxious. Okay, so we need to shorten that, because I can't type all that in that little space. Uh, I like to hang out with her because... She don't have to do schoolwork anyway. All right, so that's her why. She likes to hang out with her because she's not doing her schoolwork, okay? All right, so look down at the pictures. It says, look at the picture. Write C-H, S-H, T-H, or W-H to complete each word, okay? What would go in the first one? Um, Malia? I need to change your, hang on, unmute yourself. <laughs> yes, because that is a throne, okay? What about the next one, um, Isabel? W-H? Yes, W-H, because that is a whistle, okay? What about the next one, um, Lucas? Lucas, unmute. Okay, look. C H. Thank you, C H. Okay, for check mark. Check mark. Uh, whoever just came uh, on, whoever just came you need on. to cut your volume down. Um, the next one, uh, um, Havoc. Havoc. Shampoo. Uh, what letters go there? S H. S H. All right, somebody needs to cut me down uh, you or mute yourself. Who's not muted? Because I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback. And the last one is um, Maggie. Maggie, well, unmute yourself and tell me what letter. A C. What is this? A whisker. So is it a C H, a S H, a T H, or a W H? Um, 
What would whiskers start with? Look up here. Is a CH, an SH, a TH, or a WH? Woof, woof, woof. Um, it will be. What sound? What sound okay. makes? It? Huh? Say it again, Maggie. W H. Yes, ma'am. All right. So that completes that sheet. We filled all that in and answered those questions. Good job. All right. So the next thing we're going to do. Let me look at my list here. Um, all right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some measurements. So do you did you bring back your conversion sheet that I sent to you last week? Huh? A conversion sheet. Let me get it up. That's not the one. We're going to do some more conversions tonight, okay? So I have a little PowerPoint we're going to start with. Whoever's got L for lollipop going in the background, either cut it off or move away from it. Whoever has that L for lollipop going on needs to cut it off or move away. All right, I'm going to share this screen with you, and this is a PowerPoint that actually would have been a lap book that we would have been making in school where you would have been cutting and pasting things down to take home with you, okay? All right, so this is gonna be my metric units in math, okay? And if you look right here, this says it's gonna give you some strategies to help you learn about the metric system. The ones of you that have turned in the, the uh, metric sheet that I gave you for your choice board already this week, fabulous job on it. I didn't see anything that needed to be corrected on the ones that have already been turned in. Some of you what, don't what get choice? I'm sorry, what? What did, what, did, what did you see again? It was on the choice board for this week. There was one that said to uh, something about metric units or I don't remember exactly what it said. I didn't bring it back here with me. Um, but it, it was something in the math column that talked about metric units and or watching, I was watching the uh, YouTube video and you were supposed to watch oh, the intro to metrics and then I do that, that activity I sent you, okay? Oh, okay. All right, so here is the things that we're gonna talk about. In this, this unit, we're gonna talk about length, we're gonna talk about capacity, and we're gonna talk about mass. And we're gonna learn a little bit about each one of those. Now we're not going over every bit of it tonight because we just don't have time, okay? So we're gonna pick this back up again next week, what we don't get to tonight, all right? But here is the con a conversion chart that I want you to take a look at. Okay, I'm gonna blow it up big enough for y'all to see it. All right, so your base unit, and all of this is going to either be a meter, a gram, or a liter. All right, meter is how you're going to measure length, how long something is, meters. Gram is going to be how you're going to measure something's weight, how much it weighs. And liter is going to be to measure the volume of it, how much liquid you have in something. Okay, so those are your base units. Now, when you are talking about converting it, you have to either go up the scale or down the scale, okay? If you go down, you're just going to get smaller, okay? If you go up the scale, of course, it's gonna get bigger. So a kilometer, 
with your with your base unit kilo plus your base name kilometer is going to be larger okay than a meter it's a lot larger than a meter okay a millimeter is going to be a lot smaller okay so if you have a deca is going to be 10 times bigger a hecto is going to be a hundred times bigger and a kilo is going to be a thousand times bigger all right a deci meter is going to be 10 times smaller it'll take 10 decis to equal one meter it'll take a hundred centi meters to equal one meter and it'll take a thousand milliliters to equal one meter okay does that make sense every time you step down you're multiplying by 10. okay this one it takes 10 of these to equal one of those it takes a hundred of these Let's see if i can insert um a text box here okay okay it's going to take 100 of these it's going to take 1000 of these to equal your base unit and it's going to take 10 of these to equal your base unit okay so 10 a hundred and one thousand of these to equal back up to this okay now going the other direction it's going to take more of these so it's the same thing going in this direction whoops uh, back Okay, so if I go up here, um, that is not what I want. Sorry, my, let's see if it'll let me do it now. Yes. Okay, this is gonna move right here. So it will, a deca is gonna be 10 more, so it will take, 10 of these base to equal one deca meter okay it'll take 10 bases to equal one deca meter and the same thing up here it'll take there's a hundred of these whoops hit the wrong thing and there'll be a thousand it takes a thousand meters okay to equal one kilometer and now i see all kinds of crazy things going on on my screen there all right so that's how you read this. Does everybody understand? Thumb up if you understand what I just told you on here. Okay. Going up or going down. It'll, you start at your base. This right here is where your base is. Everything starts there. All right. And then you either go up or you go down. So it would take 10 of these to equal that, 100 of these to equal this, and a hundred, uh, a thousand of these to equal that. And going the other way, it will take um, 10 of these to equal one of those, a hundred of these to equal one of those, and a thousand of these to equal a base unit, okay? All right, so that is how you figure out and convert for meters, grams, and liters, all right? So now we're gonna take a look at this next page. And this has our conversion chart on it. All right, so look at the links up here. We said that 
one centimeter is going to equal 10 milliliters. So let's look back at this here. All right. One milliliter is going to equal 10 centimeters, right? Because a centimeter, and we make one step down, it would take 10 of these to equal one of those. Does that make sense? Everybody understand that part? That's like looking at your steps there. If you go back and look at your scale here, okay, centimeters to millimeters, you're going centimeters and then one step down. So it's going to take 10 of this one below it to equal one of the ones above it. Okay, and then you have all of your other things here for it takes one centimeter to equal 10 millimeters, one decimeter to equal 10 centimeters, one meter equals 100 centimeters. Remember that was down there in centimeters? One meter equals 10 decimeters, and one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Okay? All of this is on here and goes for area. Then you can move down to volume. And you can do weight. Weight is your grams. See here you got ends in grams. Your base unit ends in grams. Okay. You've got meters. All of these are meters. And then down at weight, you have grams. And then down in the liquids, you have, or which is capacity, you have liters. Now this liter is spelled different than you would normally see it. The meter there is spelled different than you would normally see it. They spell it, this is a, like a, a London type overseas type of spelling for it. And they spell it M-E-T-R-E-S instead of M-E-T-R-E-S. I mean E-R-S, okay? The same thing down here. They spell it R-E-S instead of E-R-S. Like we say, when we say er, it's E-R, okay? All right, so... This conversion chart here, I will send you a copy of this, but I sent you one. It may have been that one. I think I sent you a copy of this. Do you have that? Yeah, that looks similar to what I have here, but it's a little bit different. This, I think this one has more, so I will try to send that to you after class tonight, okay? I will send this to you. Just save it so you have it to look at. It's actually, see, it's from the UK. That's why it's spelled... Uh, R E S instead of E R S. All right. So using your conversion chart, we're going to talk about length. Length is a measure of a line between two points. You got a point, you got a point, and there's a measure between. How far is it from this point to this point? Length. Okay. Using the metric system, we can measure length using millimeters, which is mm, centimeters, which is cm meters, which is M, and kilometers, which is K, or sometimes you see it as KM, okay? So let's go over here to our meter chart, all right? And it even tells you up here, one centimeter CM is 10 millimeters, one meter is 100 centimeters, and one kilometer KM is 1,000 meters. So let's see here, if we're looking at kilometers, all right, one kilometer, which is right here, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. How many centimeters is that going to be? Look up here at the top. How many centimeters is that going to be? So if one meter is 100 centimeters and it takes a thousand of these meters, how many centimeters is one kilometer going to be? Anybody? Ten. No, a hundred thousand, right? Let me make that a little smaller. If I can. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so it's going to be a hundred thousand because you got to have a thousand times a hundred. So it's going to be a hundred thousand, a thousand and a hundred thousand. And then how many millimeters is that going to be? Okay, hang on just a second, be right back. How many millimeters is that going to be? Does anybody know? You're going to have 1,000, right? 1,000 meters. How many meters is in an, how many millimeters is in a meter? How many millimeters are in a meter? Isn't there a thousand millimeters in one meter? So you're gonna have 1,000 times 1,000, which is going to be, um, one million okay so you have one million oops sorry one million all right so one million one kilometer equals one thousand meters it equals a hundred thousand centimeters and it equals one million millimeters. Okay. Now, what happens here when we go from one kilometer to two kilometers? What's going to happen? Somebody tell me. What's my. How many meters will there be? How many meters will there be? Somebody tell me. 2,000. 2,000, exactly. Okay. So if we have 2,000 meters and 200,000 kilometers, how many millimeters am I going to have? Two million. Uh, who said that? Me. Lucas, you have two million. Do you see a pattern? Okay. Using that, whoops, sorry. Hit the button. Using that pattern, what are, how are we going to finish this out? Ansley, can you give me the answer to the next one here? Oh, I didn't get my. Ansley, can you give me the answer to three kilometers equals how many meters? You got to unmute yourself, Ansley. How many? Look at the pattern. How many meters? How many meters is in three kilometers? Are you there, Ansley? Three. Three what? Three hundred. Not hundred. Look above it. Three what? Right here. One meter. Thousand. Three yeah. thousand. Three thousand. Okay. Nalia, can you help me out with the next one, please?
Nalia, unmute and tell me how many's going here. Three what? I can't hear you. Are you talking? Do you have your volume on? I mean, do you have your audio on? I don't have to hear any sound. Isabel, can you tell me? What's going there? Three what? Three? 300,000. 300,000. Okay. And then, of course, they have three million filled in. So now down here at the bottom, we have to complete the whole thing. Who would like you to You put me? three million in the... Hundred thousand. Oh, so sorry. I put too many. There. Is that better? All right. So now, Lily Shoe, what's going to go in my first box here? <laughs> Four thousand. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I should have done that before. Okay. Four thousand. Uh, Lucas, what's going to go in my next box? Uh, four hundred thousand. Yeah. All right. So let me pull that up there. All right, so 400,000. And uh, Briley, what's Lexi? Lexi hasn't told me. Lexi, what's going to go in the last box? Lexi, what's going to go in the last box? Four million? Not, yes, four million. Okay. So this would be your chart for filling in and helping you to understand the, the length of things, meters, units in length. Okay. So meters is always going to be in length. If somebody says it's three kilometers away from you, okay, that means that it is 3,000 meters. It's 300,000 centimeters. And if you're talking about tiny millimeters, it's three million millimeters away. All right. So if you're going to measure the length of a mile, you're going to let measure that in kilometers, right? If you're going to measure the length of our classroom, you're probably gonna do that in meters, okay? If you're gonna measure the length of a ruler, then you're gonna talk about centimeters, okay? And if you're gonna measure the length of a paper clip, you're gonna measure millimeters. You see how it, the meters, the it gets smaller, so you need to go down in, to, in size of what you're measuring. Okay, whoops, sorry. I just made that go all the way away from y'all, didn't I? All right, so let's take a look real quick at this conversion table, okay? This is for capacity, all right? Capacity is the amount of liquid that a, a container can hold, all right? I don't have my bottle, I meant to bring my bottle back here. When you have a drink bottle, it has liquid in it. And you call it, if you buy the big one at the store, you call it a two liter, okay? If you buy a small one, you also call that liter or you call it cups or ounces, okay? So this says that using the metric system, we measure capacity using milliliters, which would be small, like millimeters, millimeters was small, 
milliliters would be small also. I don't have it here, it's at school, but I had a sample of a syringe to show you. When you get a shot, they give you milliliters, okay? On the syringe, they have milliliters. Then you have liters, and then you have kiloliters, and which one do you think is gonna be the largest one? Milliliters, liters, or kiloliters? Which one's gonna be largest? Have it? Kilometers? Not meters, it's liters. I, 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 I said I said kiloliters. Oh, yes, mm. kiloliters is gonna be your largest. And again, it's still gonna be on that same scale, okay? One liter is going to be equal to, I mean, a thousand liters is gonna be equal to one kiloliter, just like one mil, one mm, kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, okay? So the scale's still gonna be the same. Kiloliters is your biggest. It's a thousand times bigger than a liter. Milliliter is gonna be your smallest. It's gonna be a thousand times smaller than a liter, all right? So keeping that in mind, let's look at this. It says metric units of capacity. A large bottle is about the size of a liter. An eyedropper holds about one millimeter, okay? So one liter, just like I said, is equal to 1,000 milliliters. So looking at our table here, okay, this table, if I have three, my box, hang on, my, my thing's not working. There it goes. All right. If I have, I don't know why my box is going away, so sorry. My technology is not working for me today. All right, there we go. If I have three liters, that's more than a two liter drink. You have the two liter drink plus a whole nother liter. That's a drink and a half, okay? How many milliliters is gonna be in that? How many milliliters is gonna be in that? Three thousand. Who said that, Lucas? Correct. Three thousand. And then the next column says number pairs. It wants you to write the liter and then the milliliter. So over here, it wants us to write the pair of numbers that we just put in here, okay? So it wants us to write three comma space 3,000, okay? Does that make sense? This is just wanting you to write a numbered pair for it, the three and the 3,000, they have one and 1,000, one and 1,000, okay? And they put it in parentheses, you can do that. All right, so somebody other than Lucas, as he told me that one, somebody else raise your hand and tell me what's gonna go, I need to get off my hand, in this box right here. Lexi, can you help me out? What's going to go in this box? Five thousand. Yes, ma'am. Five thousand. Okay. So now what's going to go into our next box right here? Um, Cameron, can you see the screen now? Yes. All right. So what's gonna go in this box here, Cameron? Mm, five, 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 five thousand? 
It's going to be a five mm -hmm. and five thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So raise your hand and tell me who wants to do the next one for me. Uh, Isabel, tell me what's going to go in this box. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Okay. And what's going to go in the next box? Seven, seven thousand. Seven and seven thousand. Some reason my thing is not cooperating, so I can't get it in there. But yes, you are correct. I keep clicking on it and it keeps giving me nothing. There it is. All right, so seven thousand and then this one will be what she said. Seven and 7,000, okay? All right, so that, do you see how liters and, milli, and meters, liters and meters, the conversion's the same but one is talking about length. Which one's talking about length? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Isabel? Which one of them is talking about length? Meter or liter? Meter. Length. It was the one we first did, which was meter. Which one's talking about liquid that you might like a drink? Milliliter. We're just talking about base units, either meter or liter. Meter is going to be how long something is with an M, meter. Liter with an L, liter is going to be capacity, okay? Capacity is going to be liter. See that L-I-T-E-R right there? L-I-T-E-R, liter. That means liquid. Okay? So liter is L for liquid. It means we're talking about the capacity of something. It's a liquid. Okay? All right, we're not going to go to the next one tonight. We're going to wait till Monday to start on the next one. Okay? But I wanted you guys, I'll send this out to you so that you can have a, a, a visual to look at. Okay? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen. All right. So the next thing that we want to talk about on, on our agenda tonight is adaptations. Okay? Adaptations. We... We started talking about adaptations last week. Can anybody tell me what an adaptation is? When an animal moves to a new environment. Not when they move to a new, that would be a uh, migration. When they adapt. Adapt, have it? Never mind. Go ahead, say it. What does adaptation it's when an animal, it's when, when an a, a, animal adapts to a new location? When they, they might not be adapting to a new location. They might just be adapting to the environment that they're in that's changing constantly. Because last week we talked about one thing in particular, okay, that um, was um, – a type of adaptation. Who remembers what we talked about? There were we talked about two kinds. We talked about the kind that happens between different times of the year. What's it called when the the year the weather changes during the year? Anybody? What's it called when we go from summer to spring to summer to fall to winter? Those are called what? Havoc? Seasons. Seasons. So those are called seasonal adaptations.
Remember last week when we talked about the hair, the Arctic hair? In the summertime, he was brown to blend in with the rocks and the stuff around him, the ground. And then in the wintertime, what happened to his coat? He turns to white. He turned white. Okay. So seasonal means that from one season to the next, it changes. Okay. It changes. All right. So then there was permanent. I didn't spell right. Um, I didn't spell. It. I didn't spell it. Permanent. Okay. There was an animal we talked about last week. Don't open that, Lucas. There was an animal we talked about on Monday. Sorry, not last week. On Monday, that had a permanent change. Does anybody remember what animal we had that had a permanent change? Their body changed to adapt to this, and it's not going back. It'll stay that way. It's permanent. A polar bears. Yeah, a polar bear. <laughs> Okay, polar bears had an, they adapted to living in the cold and walking on the snow by getting snowshoe type feet. Remember? Wide, yeah. big, wide. So they would have a big area to walk mm -hmm. on when they were walking in the snow. Okay, so those are permanent changes. They got lots of hair. They got lots of fat on their body to help them get through the cold, cold, cold time. Okay? So those are all permanent changes. All right. So if you look at uh, the things that I sent you, um, let me find it real quick. It's on my screen here. All right. Let's look at your adaptation project. Okay. All right, I'm gonna screen share here in just a second, as soon as I get it. So you can see what I'm talking about. Let's talk about this one. Okay. I don't need this on there. All right, the first thing you need to do is you need to know what types of adaptations there are, okay? Adaptation is a change or modification that occurs over time with an animal that helps them to survive. Okay. Blubber is a layer of fat that keeps them warm. Those you're not going to have animals living in Florida that have a lot of blubber on them, are you? Probably not. Do you think it's cold in Florida? Is anybody listening? Oh, okay. Oh, it is not cold in Florida. It's known as the hot state. Exactly. So you're not going to have a lot of animals living down there that have a lot of blubber. Where would you find the blubber? And the like blubber. Antarctica. Antarctica up north. Okay. Camouflage is the way in which an animal hides or disguises itself so that it blends in with its surroundings. That's what you were supposed to be going and finding a picture of for your Zoom project. Or Monday, you were supposed to find something that was camouflaged. It was blending in with this environment. It adapted its body to hide for safety. Defense. You have is mine. What? You have mine. Um, I'm not sure right this second. I have to look. Did you send it? Yep. Okay. Defense, the way in which an animal protects itself. An animal will defend itself. What, is, what are some things that an animal might have that would it could defend itself with? Can you think of any? What would you use to defend yourself? It's got to be something on your body. I would use my hands to defend myself. Okay. And your hands would probably, if you were an animal, you wouldn't be making a fist and punching. You would probably be sticking out your what? Teeth. Your teeth or your claws. Okay. So an animal might develop long, sharp claws to defend itself. 
It might develop long, sharp teeth to bite with, okay? So, and some animals develop a spray like a skunk, they developed a spray to defend themselves that makes predators go away. And some have developed stuff on their skin that if you touch them, they're poisonous and it'll make you sick. Or if something else tries to eat them, it'll make them sick, okay? So those are all defensive things that an animal can have. Uh, chickens would have claws. Um, see, what else could you think of that would be defense? Um, cows. My cows in my pasture, they use their tail to swat things away. A lot of times, like especially flies and stuff, it's a defense. They can use that to swat things, all right? Um, environment and animal surrounding is in their climate, their soul, uh, soil, uh, where the living things are, okay? We talked about environment. We talked about the habitat. That's the place they live. We talked about prey, which is the thing that's, going to be eaten. The predator is the thing that's going to eat it. And quills are what you see on a porcupine. Okay? That's one of a porcupine's defense mechanisms. Okay? He defends himself because he has hollow sharp spines that he uses. If you touch him, try to touch him, he they will poke you. Okay? It keeps things from eating him because they don't want to get poked, all right? So those are some of the things that, um, uh, words you need to know in order to do this project, okay? All right. This says animal adaptation help sheet, all right? This is telling you examples of adaptations that help animals get and eat food, all right? So the first one says sharp teeth or claws how help some animals catch and eat. I gotta move this over a little bit. Uh, help them eat with their prey. Large flat teeth help animals to chew on live, large or live plants. Okay, so if they have large flat teeth, they're probably a herbivore and eat only plants. The shape of a bird's beak can help it uh, eat specific foods. It's long and it's sharp, so it can reach down into flowers and stuff, all right? And stubby beaks, and it helps them to spear the fish. Uh, short stubby beaks is good for eating insects. So the way their beak is developed, is it sharp and pointy where it can stab at stuff? Or is it short and blunt where it can pick up a bug, okay? Uh, number two says examples of adaptations that help animals defend itself. You have spines, quills, tusks. Tusks are what elephants have. You know, those tusks that come out. Uh, so, um, I'm trying to think of that animal. A warthog, maybe? Pumba? No, Pumba and uh, Timon. Remember Pumba mm -hmm. and Timon from the Lion King? Okay, mm -hmm. Pumba was a, he had tusk. Okay. Um, so they, that helps the per, them protect themselves. Camouflage can help them hide like a chameleon. Some of them get noises that scare things away. They hiss. A cockroach hisses. Okay, you probably never really heard a cockroach hissing, but other animals probably have. Uh, and smell, ooh, like a skunk. Okay. Number three says uh, adaptations that help animals care for their young Kangaroos have pouches. They're called marsupials. Okay, marsupials, there's more marsupials than just kangaroos, but that's one of them. They have a pouch that they keep their baby in to keep them uh, alive. Uh, others, they carry them in different ways. Monkeys carry their babies on their back, okay, when they move around. Uh, this ensures that a scorpion carries its babies on its back. Uh, a mouse feeder fish carries its babies in its mouth. Okay. Uh, building what? a nest. Building a nest in, in places to keep baby uh, birds. They build it in trees up off the ground so that predators can't eat them unless a, sometimes like a snake or something, but it's to prevent that. Okay. So these are some things, ways that animals have adapted to taking care of their young. Four says examples of adaptations that help animals adjust to their climate. 
they get thick fur, they get fat blubber. Uh, that helps them in the cold climates. You got your walruses, your otters. Uh, large ears will help some animals in hot countries to stay cool, like the elephant, because their large ears will let the heat radiate out of their body, okay? Uh, five is an example of adaptations that help animals move in a way that helps them survive. How they move around, large bones and bodies helps birds to fly. I mean, light bones, not large. Light bones, uh, fins and tails help fish to swim so they can swim a lot faster than other things that get in the water. You can't jump in and out swim a fish, okay? Mm -mm. Uh, being able to move silently. Some animals are very, very sneaky. You don't hear them coming. Uh, and fast movement, such as a cheetah, okay, it helps to uh, helps them to escape other animals, okay? So, these five things listed right here, okay? These five things listed are going to help you to fill out this form, all right? There's a lot of things here, okay? Up at the top, it says environment. In a minute, we're gonna go to the sheet where I sent you the environment, okay? And you're gonna choose from that, that sheet of the environments, you're gonna choose one of them, okay? And then you're going to fill in this information. Information about the environment use only what is written on the sheet, okay? So from the environment sheet that I'm gonna give you, you're gonna choose one of the environments. You're gonna tell me what the climate is, okay? What's the environment like? You remember the environment is the ecosystem, right? And then you're gonna tell me how will the animals stay warm or cold? That means how did their body adapted? What did they do to get their body to adapt to that area? Then you're going to tell me what types of food is available in that in that environment. What kind of then whatever it says about feeding. Then you're going to talk about prey. What animals are there that are prey? What animals are there are predators? How do they defend themselves? Land forms. What type of landforms would you find? Mountains, rivers, deserts, or other things? Okay. And how does your animal move on the land with their fins, their wings, their legs? The snake slithers, no legs, it slides. Okay. And then other features about that environment is it light all year, dark all year? Half the time is it dark? Is it raining all the time? And then you have some other stuff here. And then how do the animals in this environment care for their babies, for their young, all right? So you're gonna fill this out. And you're gonna use, I'm gonna stop sharing, okay? You're gonna use this next one. Let's look at it. Screen. All right, these are your environments. You have environment one, environment two, environment three, and environment four. You're gonna choose one of these. Environment one is a jungle island. So at the top of your sheet there where it says environment, you would write jungle island, and then you would answer those questions based on what you read here. Not going off and finding any other information, just based off of what you read here. If you want to choose environment two, the plains of Moldova, okay, then you would read this and answer those questions. And at the top where it says environment, you put environment two, plains of Moldova. Environment three, the Kanabi Desert. If you want to answer those questions about the Kanabi Desert, you're going to use this information to answer the speech about Kanabi Deserts. Or you can choose Environment 4, the Majestic Mountains, and you would use this information. You are only using one. Don't use pieces from all four. Okay? You understand, Maggie? Yeah. Don't get 
part from one environment and part from another environment, choose one environment, either one, two, three, or four. Okay? And then you're going to go use this to go back and answer the questions on this. Okay? So right here, you're either going to put environment one, environment two, environment three, or environment four. Then you're going to use the other information that I sent you to answer the questions based on that information from that environment. Okay? That's going to be your Zoom. Okay? That's going to be your Zoom. It's going to be done by. Y'all think y'all can get this done by Monday? No. No. I'll give you till Thursday. One week. Okay? Read, look into, answer these questions by next Thursday. This is your Zoom assignment, right? <laughs> You're going to fill out this adaptation form project. All right, everybody got that? Mm -hmm. All right, any questions about how to do this adaptation project? Stop tapping. All right. And the last thing that I have for us to do tonight is a Kahoot review. Who's ready to do some Kahooting? Uh, Kahoot. Let me get my Kahoot up. Right. Okay, and I'm going to share with you. Just a second, right? so everybody, get your Kahoot ready. And here is your number for tonight: two nine zero five zero two one. Two nine zero five zero two one. Okay, I got Nalia and Havoc and Lily too and Briley. Where's that? I got Lexi. I'm I got Ansley. I got six of you in. There's ten of you on the screen. So I should have. Is there anybody that's not going to be participating? So I'll. All right. Try hard to be. Should say Lucas. Miss Miller. Uh huh. Kim's not playing. Okay. I got Isabel. I still got one more need to get in. There's ten of you, and I got eight in so far. All right, and Maggie's in. All right, and Cameron said he can't. He can't play. All right, so here we are. We're ready to start. All right, this is a language arts review. We had some trouble last week. 18 questions. Which word is spelled correctly? Look at your screen. Which word is spelled correctly? Seven was, I mean, seven of you got that correct. All right. All right, Lucas is in the lead. All right, next. Is it a sentence? Nancy's polka dot umbrella had a hole she got wet. Is this a, is it a sentence? Nancy's polka dot umbrella had a hole she got wet. Yes. 
It's a run-on sentence because there's actually two sentences there. Nancy's polka dot umbrella had a hole, period. She got wet, period. Okay, so it is a run-on sentence. Oh, Havoc has taken over the lead. Okay, next. Is it a sentence? When my dad works at a bank in downtown Dallas. When my dad works at a bank in downtown Dallas. It's a fragment. Does it tell what dad, what happens when dad works at the bank? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's missing some information. So it's a fragmented sentence. Maggie has gotten three in a row correct. Good job, Maggie. All right, Havoc is still in the lead, but look at Maggie coming up behind him. All right, number four. Choose a sentence that is complete. Absolutely. The rest of them were run on sentences or fragmented. Okay. I like to eat pizza and sausage is a complete thought. I did not eat that. All right. Havoc and Maggie, you are still up there. Wow. Okay. Find the mistake. I went to the doctor and he checked my tonsils. I went to the doctor and he checked my tonsils. What's the mistake? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This is gonna wrong. Oh, what happened? I went to the doctor, comma, and he checked my tonsils. Two different thoughts, okay? Oh, Maggie just took the lead. Look at you go, girl. All right, six. In which sentence is the word to used correctly? Okay, T O means to do something. T W O is the number two, and T O O means also. Okay, when I eat too much ice cream, my stomach hurts. Okay, no way. If I do eat too much popcorn, I am crazy. <clears throat> Oh, Lucas just came back into the lead. Mm. Number seven. Which word is spelled correctly? I hate this. Correct. Oh. An I E S. Change the Y to an I before you add E S. Okay, Lucas is still in the lead. Number eight, fill in the blank. My mama and blank went to see the jungle book. I'm so sorry, Mom. Mom and I went, well, my mom and blank went to see the jungle book. I don't know. It's too hard. What is that? Yes, it is. See? My mom and I 
Not my mom and me. My mom and I. Okay? All right. Which sentence shows possession correctly? Possession means they own. Possession means own. Which one is correct? I'm just one. I don't know. Me either. Okay. George's cousin. That's his. Okay. Belongs to him. He has a cousin. You have a cousin. Okay. Maggie, look at you go, girl. You're back in the back. Ten. Fill in the blank. Going to love this movie. Um. Blank going to love this movie. Or you are okay. You apostrophe R E is short for you are. It's a conjunct, I mean, a contraction for you are. Okay, Lucas is back in the lead. Oh, I'm yes. Oh, I'm a Brandon yelled, I've got it. Where does the comma yeah. go? Place the comma. Brandon yelled, I've got it. What happened? <laughs> Absolutely. After yelled, Brandon yelled, comma. I've got it. I've got it. Lucas, Lily's in second. Why no? <laughs> Lily, why? I was so close. Right, well, place the comma. I wish I could spend the night at your house, Rebecca said sadly. He comes out of her house. I wish I could spend the night at your house. That's what she said, then comma, Rebecca said sadly, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Maggie. Oh, Briley and Lucas. No. Mm -hmm. 13, fill in the blank. When I visit my grandparents, blank dog likes to sleep next to me. Oops, what am I doing? <laughs> there, okay. T H E I R means it's their dog. That's a possessive, okay. Okay. Got some people moving no, on. Fourteen. No. Which word is spelled correctly. That one is like so easy. <laughs> yep, it needs two ends. B E N N E N E R. Now I'm coming back. Brian's I'm coming, back. coming back too. No. I'm getting my lead back. 15. Mm -hmm. Find the mistake. We ate at McDonald's before our field trip to the zoo. Mm -hmm. 
What's the mistake? Everybody should know this one. Not me. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. McDonald's. McDonald's is a proper noun. All yeah, proper nouns are always capitalized. I keep coming up. Well, because of me. All right. Six correct. God. Sixteen. Find the mistake. Some people look for places more closer to home to visit and explore. Some people look for places more closer to home to visit and explore. Delete more. It doesn't need to say more places closer. Some people look for places closer to home, okay? They don't look for more clo places closer. All right. Riley's in the lead and look at Nalia coming up there. She's sneaking up on you, Riley. Candy. 17, find the mistake. Temple monkeys are golden brown, weigh 10 pounds, and are 17 inches tall. Please don't like it, don't like it, please don't. Yeah. Insert a comma after brown. It should say temple monkeys are golden brown, comma, weigh 10 pounds, comma, and are 17 inches tall because weight and color are two different things. Okay. And it looks like this might be our last question. Yes. Find the mistake. Before Tom eats breakfast, he always makes his bed. Uh, I don't know. Make it big. Make it big. Make it big. Yes, Yes, it needs to come after breakfast. Before Tommy's breakfast, then you're doing pause and take a breath. He always Yay. takes the bed. Okay? So some of those where you need to pause is two separate thoughts. Before Tommy's breakfast, he always makes his bed. All right. Are we excited to see who is in the lead? Yes. All right. Let's see I'm who so had third place. Third place is Nalia. Way to go, Nalia. Second place is who? The Beast Lucas. And first place goes to Riley. Awesome. Good job. With runners up being Lily in fourth and Lexi in fifth. Good job, guys. Good job. At least I tried. Because <laughs> of Lily. You did great. No, I did not. You tried. <laughs> no, I didn't. So you guys did really good with that, okay? All right. So, um, that is going to conclude, uh, except for I wanted to say that the few of you still have homework passes. I want to just remind you that you can use it this week or next week. You get one night or one block, sorry, one block off. Uh, Isabel, you have a homework pass. Lucas, you have a homework pass for a block. Nalia, you have a homework pass. Ansley, you have a homework pass for your birthday coming up. So, uh, and Maggie, you have a homework pass for your birthday coming up. Okay. So okay. it means that one block, you put an X on it like this. 
Put yeah, an, I, you I, have your block. I know it. Put an X through it and write A T. That means homework pass. Okay. okay. You're using no a homework smaller. pass for that block. Huh? Did you um take off take my dojo points off for that block that I didn't do? I think I forgot to take yours off. I couldn't remember. They didn't go down, did they? For last week I didn't take I don't think I did. I think I need to take yours off. I took oh. Havix. All right, I'll take 15 points off for yours last week, Lily, okay? Okay. All right, and then I've added, Monday I added uh, the stuff that you have. So check out yours because you may have enough, which Havoc, I looked at yours earlier today. Let me put it up real quick, and we'll take a quick look at it. All right, I'm going to stop recording, though, because all this doesn't need to be 